What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and the Turtle City Enders are now here with the week 4 matchup against the Baron Munich. Of course, Shadi is the coach of the Baron Munich and we definitely have our work cut out for us against his team. Um, his team has gone 2 and 1, which is a pretty good record because we have the same record. So, uh, definitely going to be interesting going up against his team. Now, of course, the Eternity Enders did win last week's battle against the Portland Timbers barely in a 1-0 victory. So we definitely want to take that momentum and move into this week with that the momentum of not only the win, but with, I would say, pretty decent playing. Uh, I really, really have enjoyed using the Pokemon that are on my team that I drafted. And with them being overall a little bit uh, unconventional picks outside of maybe Mega Law Punny and Tyranitar, I I'm very pleased with how they performed. Now, all that aside, Shoddy's team. We have Togekiss, Manaphy, Jolteon, Registeel, Shaman, Hitmonlee, Kurim, Skuntank, and Mega Aerodactyl. Uh, taking a look at his team, the way the KOs have stacked up, Shaman accounts for the majority of his KOs with five KOs. And um, with Registeel and Mega Aerodactyl actually picking up the rear on the KOs there. Now since Togekiss has gotten two deaths, um, just based on the way he's used it previously, I, I can expect him to bring Togekiss in this matchup too. Uh, and generally, I actually feel like I have a pretty good matchup against the team. It's going to come down to, will I be able to put enough damage on his team so that something can come up and clean up in the, in the end game? Because overall, his team is nicely balanced. He has four general special attackers, four general physical attackers, and things that kind of support. So since he has such a nicely balanced team, I won't find it very easy to overwhelm him with uh, offensive pressure. That being said, the combination of Tyranitar and Stoutland in this matchup is fantastic. Stoutland is able to 2KO every single Pokemon that he has except for Registeel, which still takes a whopping amount of damage from a Choice Banded superpower. So I am definitely going to look at bringing Stalin into this battle. With the power of Sand Rush, I can just make sure I have enough speed to outspeed Mega Aerodactyl and Jolteon, and then after that, put some, H put some in HP and I'll be good to go. Uh, I might play around with some damage calcs as far as Retaliate versus Return. There's some optimization to be had there, because with Choice Band, some KOs from Return could be one-hit KOs with Retaliate, but that forces one of my teammates to go down in, uh, in order to fulfill that. And I'm not really too sad about the two-hit KO possibility, because with the combination of Cofagrigus and Florgis, I should have good switches to every single thing that he has. Um, the only thing that I don't really like switching either of those two things into is maybe Kurum, depending on the set that Kurum runs. Kurum can go physical or special, and hitting on the opposite side of the spectrum that I decide to invest in those two defensive type Pokemon uh, might leave those Pokemon hurting. Plus, Kurum gets a lot of uh, random coverage, such as uh, he could he could run a hidden power, but I don't see him doing that. Kurum can get Flash Cannon. Uh, and of course, Kofagrigus doesn't really want to take a stab, ice, or dragon type attack. So it, it does require me to play around a little bit with that. Um, it is very likely that I will bring the same Tyranitar that I brought in my first matchup to this battle. Just because of how well Tyranitar does against his special attackers here. Um, Togekiss, Manaphy, Jolteon, Shaman, and to a lesser extent, Kurum all struggle to one hit KO or even two hit KO Tyranitar without investment. So if I invest properly, especially with the ability to take a Focus Blast from a, uh, a Choice Scarf Heliolisk, I know I can definitely take some of these super effective hits from these Pokemon. Now threats on his side that I am definitely going to have my eye on are going to be letting things like Manaphy set up. And on the other side of the spectrum, not keeping in check things like Mega Aerodactyl and Hitmonlee. Uh, Hitmonlee basically can't touch my team as long as I have Kofagrigus around. But if Kofagrigus goes down, we're going to have some problems because he can use Mach Punch to hit Stoutland even through the Sand Rush. Uh, Manaphy can easily use Calm Mind or Tail Glow to set up against either one of my walls. 
Uh, and with that in mind, I actually really may bring Haze on Kafagrigus this week because I know I can expect Kafagrigus to take a hit from Manaphy and then Haze the, the boost away. And maybe even burn it or something. Um, Florges, since I am bringing Tyranitar, I don't want to utilize the, the Synthesis set. This week will definitely be the Wish Passing Moonblast Energy Ball set with Wish and Protect. Um, Moonblast definitely is going to have some great neutral coverage here against everything basically but Registeel. And then I will have Energy Ball just for a Mana Fee that tries to set up in my face. I'll get a little bit more damage from Energy Ball and have a nice chance for the special defense drops too. Uh, something that I'm really toying around here, I need to decide after Mega Loapani, Tyranitar, Kafagrigus, and Stotland, if I, who my last Pokemon is going to be. Kabutops, Levani, and Noivern are basically out for this week. They don't have a good matchup against this Pokemon. Um, Kabutops, it could throw some nice um, damage around with Rock-type moves against this team, but even then it fails to get a lot of the one hit KOs that he needed to get, and he gets hit back hard by some of his bulky Pokemon. Levani is only really useful against his team against uh, Manaphy, and since Manaphy can utilize Ice Beam and it could outspeed, not worth bringing it for that threat. And it's definitely not worth bringing just for Sticky Web, because he has uh, a couple ways of getting rid of entry hazards, so not necessarily going to utilize it for that either. And of course, please excuse me if I sound like I'm getting sick. This time of the year is just really not good for my uh, health issues. But anyways though, leave Andy not really a great pick there. And of course, Noivern just runs into so much trouble against this team. Um, I want to use Sandstorm, which of course would lower the accuracy of my own Hurricane moves. He has not only a resist for Steel type moves, he also has, I mean for Dragon type moves, he also has an immunity in the form of Togekiss. And I could utilize something like Boom Burst, and then Registeel basically switches into Noivern all day, even if I have Flamethrower. So I don't see Noivern being brought to this battle. Uh, I do like Noivern's speed if I do scarf it, if I decide to bring it for some reason. It's going to get some nice coverage against this team. Um, at that point, then we're just looking at Hitmonlee's fake out as a way to outspeed it or a Scarf Jolteon. I really don't expect him to bring a Scarf Jolteon. But that does leave my team with Toxicroak and Reuniclus as possible six members to bring to the battle. Toxicroak, after running a couple of uh, different set ideas around in my head, Toxicroak is actually going to be able to outspeed Mega Aerodactyl with the Choice Scarf. So if um, if that's that is that is certainly a thing worth covering. Toxicroak has enough neutral coverage to hit my opponent's entire team for at least neutral damage, if not super effective. He gets Gunk Shot for Togekiss and Shaman. He gets um, I can run a variety of elemental punches for different Pokemon such as uh, Manaphy or the Registeel, and I also get the Fighting type staff for Registeel and Curum and Skunk Tank. Skunk Tank here is going to be kind of a pain for something like Reuniclus, uh, with Skunk Tank's ability to not only trap it with Pursuit, but also to a lesser degree uh, get rid of my entry hazards with Defog when I have something like Reuniclus out on the field. So Toxicroak seems really, really nice, but while Reuniclus isn't a good defensive matchup here, it's a fantastic offensive matchup. Uh, something like Trick Room against his relatively fast team could punch a lot of holes in the team for something to come behind and clean up. Uh, Reuniclus also gets that nice neutral coverage against his team with um, just utilizing Psychic and, uh, or Psyshock rather, and Focus Blast. You get a lot of great neutral coverage here with the only thing really wanting to come in on that being maybe Togekiss. Uh, and even Togekiss doesn't want to take a Life Orbed, Stab, Max, Special Attack, Invested, Psyshock. Uh, so I do have some options there between Toxicook and Reuniclus. I just expect him to really look at my team's overall, I guess, um, my team is really focused on speed, so I don't think he's going to try to outspeed me too much um, with what I'm bringing this week, and I think he's just going to focus on the bulk. So we're going to be expecting Togekiss, Manaphy, Registeel, Mega Aerodactyl, um, and then after that, it really just depends on what he expects me to bring. Uh, it'll be really, really interesting here to have Choice Scarf Toxicroak because depending on what he brings, I'll be able to deal with it with Toxicroak as a secondary check. Um, having Mega Law Punny and Stoutland in the back to basically just throw normal type moves at his team, barring Registeel, which doesn't want to take a fighting type move, 
Uh, he doesn't have a switch in for any of that. Um, he can bring a Mega Aerodactyl, but then I immediately outspeed him, and I can hit him with another move if I decide not to bring a Bandit Stotland. So I like the matchup overall, but it will require me to generally um, keep the keep the priority on my side of the field. Uh, and here, a really good overall lead is going to be Mega Lopunny. He doesn't really have anything that can take the fake out, and so I would get a free fake out, uh, and then. I could Mega Evolve on that turn. Alternatively, since he doesn't have anything to take those hits from Mega Lop Honey, I could run a really annoying Substitute Return Power Up Punch Drain Punch set that I've really been kicking around in my head. With that, uh, as he switches out to say um, Mega Aerodactyl to take the fake out, or maybe even Register to take the fake out, I can get a Substitute Up Power Up Punch, and then with the plus one Drain Punch, I'm able to KO a lot of those threats. From that range, uh, and after Mega Aerodactyl goes down, uh, Mega Lopunny just has a field day. So I'm I'm really going to be looking for opportunities to get that power up punch in there. And if not, Fake Out gets me some nice overall chip damage against this team. Uh, but anyways, though, I hope you guys look forward to the matchup. I should be battling him uh, on Friday. On Friday is when I should be battling him. So I'm recording this ahead of time, which is nice. I'm talking to you from the past, just like any posted content, which is kind of cool. How's your day going? I hope your Friday is going well. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the battle, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye now.